A troubling trend at some of our country's top hospitals. Several recent lawsuits alleging that doctors are booking multiple surgeries simultaneously, leaving during them and charging for work that they did not do. And one lawsuit aimed at USC's medical school. A former professor says that the practice led to surgeries being left to inexperienced residents, sometimes resulting in complications for patients, even death. And in Boston, Massachusetts, General Hospital agreeing to pay $14.6 million to settle a lawsuit that alleged surgeons there were illegally juggling multiple procedures at the same time. We are joined now by Ruben Gutman, who's involved in several of these lawsuits involving overlapping surgeries. Ruben, thank you so much for joining us. Well, thank you for having me tonight. What do you want Americans to know? How widespread is this practice of, of double booking a surgery? Double booking, triple booking, it's uh, its pervasive. It's pervasive in teaching hospitals. Uh, when we talk about uh, general hospital, Massachusetts General Hospital, uh, it's the teaching hospital for Harvard University. And if it's happening at Harvard University's teaching hospital, it's happening all over the country. Uh, it's happened at the University of Pittsburgh Medical Center, which entered into a, a settlement. We have a case now against the Erlanger Healthcare Systems uh, in uh, in uh, in Tennessee, uh, and we had a case against Lenox Hill. So it's pervasive. Uh, it's about uh, uh, arrogance, uh, the monetization of misery, medical care, uh, health care, and uh, and a lack of oversight because this is happening when patients are anesthetized, intubated, and unconscious. They don't know who is being who is tending to their surgery. Yeah. Under what conditions, if at all, is it legal for surgeons to uh, double or triple book an operation? And and do they always have to tell the patient in advance before they're put under uh, that that this is going to happen? They will be leaving the room. Well, informed consent is a fundamental tenant of the uh, tenant sure. of, uh, of of the law. And uh, if you don't have proper informed consent, the common law would say that that's battery, which is an age-old tort that dates back to British common law. Uh, in the Medicare system, it's highly reg regulated. Uh, for example, you you can't uh, uh, double or triple book when the operation is less than five minutes. You can't do it for endoscopic procedures. You have to have uh, a qualified uh, attending to physician backup when you're doing overlapping surgery. Uh, and, and you have to keep very, very meticulous records. Uh, it's extremely regulated. And most importantly, uh, if you do overlap, you can't, uh, you have to finish the key and critical parts of the surgery before you move on to the second surgery. You can't go back and forth. It's based on the fundamental age old tenet, I suppose, dating back to the book of Matthew, that no man can serve two masters. And the problem is, is that there's fundamentally no oversight over this because the patients don't know what's happening to them. Yeah, of course. I mean, so what would you recommend to Americans now? Is it safe to assume? I mean, you were there, you were talking with the surgeon, the you know anesthesiologist comes in. I think most, most Americans would assume that this is the surgeon who's going to be with me and guiding me through this whole thing while I'm under. Is that a safe assumption anymore? Or should patients be asking, hey, are you going to be in the room and completing this entire procedure? Well, it's funny because in one of my cases, uh, I asked one of the chief surgeons at a hospital, what would you tell your mother mm. if uh, if she was having surgery? And he gave me a whole litany of questions. Uh, and you should ask your surgeon, is, is this the only surgery that you have booked at this time, right? Who else is going to be involved in my surgery? Are there going to be residents? Are there going to be fellows? Is there a qualified backup? Uh, you know, and a doctor should expect you to ask these questions. And if he's not comfortable answering these questions, then that's a that's an indicator that there's a problem. I appreciate that. And, and we are out of time, but I just want to um, drive home and ask, uh, have patients actually died as a result of this? We've seen situations uh, where patients have contacted us and said that uh, the, the care has uh, been problematic. One patient contacted us and said that he was, we found out that he was actually part of a double book surgery and the doctor was rushing through the surgery and pierced an artery and a shoulder replacement. So um, the data isn't fully in yet. Uh, we don't really know the full impact of it. And I suppose uh, we'll leave that to the tort system and the medical malpractice lawyers to figure out. It's a, we're, we're still trying to understand the magnitude of what's going on and understand the uh, side effects from what's going sure. on. Attorney Ruben Gutman, I appreciate your time tonight. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.